Hi folks, on the bench today we've got uh, a couple of analog discovery uh, multi-instrument uh, USB uh, uh, devices and uh, we've got the first one which is the Mark 1 uh, this uh, came out a few years ago now um, and we've also got the uh, version 2 uh, which came out a few months ago and uh, I guess I'll uh, just uh, show you what the difference is between them so uh, roughly speaking just outside the package if you're interested in this um, I'll tell you why it, uh, it has importance for me and that's that um, I tend to use this device when I'm uh, travelling so um, a nice small device that I can uh, pack away is, uh, is always nice and uh, this, uh, the original one comes in what looks like a, a sort of DVD uh, presentation case um, and uh, yeah pretty good and uh, inside it um, you have uh, like a foam insert, a, a sort of moulded foam insert, and you've got the device itself, the um, the leads, which uh, this actually comes apart um, like this. And um, there's a ferrite here. If you fancy popping that on, um, I guess it's for the USB cable. Um, I've got so many micro USBs. Yeah, just to show you, it's actually a micro USB. Um, in on the left which goes off to computer and then you've got a three and a half millimeter um, output to headphones uh, if you want to use the um, DAC and uh, also in here um, as well as normally when you buy it you get this micro USB cable um, there's some male-to-male uh, uh, -male headers so you can pop those on the end and um, then plug the other end into your into your breadboard um, so that's the the original one. Um, I quite like the packaging actually, and in fact the whole packaging goes with me. It uh, protects it, so uh, that's quite nice. That um, this is the uh, Mark II version, and I haven't uh, I have plugged this in, but uh, see the packaging is still fairly new. Um, and uh, inside, here we go. Here's our little device, and uh, then inside here exactly as before pretty much identical here you can plug that in looks like I haven't even taken this out yet because uh, got the same uh, ferrite and uh, also those uh, male to males and uh, a micro USB uh, AB cable um, so you'll notice also that the packaging here is um, is about twice the the width of the old one, uh, roughly the same dimensions, height and width. Um, so I think if I was going to be taking this this one with me on a travels, uh, I think probably what I'd do is um, put a load of other stuff in here as well. Uh, but it's uh, nice because it's transparent, so that's quite neat. Let's do a little size comparison as well on the device itself. So these are the two devices. Um, see roughly equivalent. Um, not a lot of difference in it. Certainly on height, it's perhaps slightly uh, taller with the new one. A little bit uh, wider as well. So um, roughly equivalent. Now, as far as I can tell from the specs, the only benefit of the of the version two um, is that uh, it has a, a variable power supply on it, uh, whereas this one just has a, a, a fixed plus and minus uh, power supply on it. Um, I can't remember what it is. Let me have a look on the specs here. Is it plus and minus five or plus and minus three volts? Plus and minus five volts on here fixed, whereas this one's variable, and you can vary the plus and minus. Um, uh, supplies uh, individually as well, so uh, you can have plus five and minus three and a three point three or one or two point five or whatever you want, and it's, uh, it seems to be pretty arbitrary what you can plug in there too. And one other thing that uh, is quite handy for these, uh, if I can find it, is you can get a, um, a USB board as well, which plugs in and um, get one out of the way for the time being, and. Um, if you just use this, all you have is um, a differential uh, uh, input to the oscilloscope. Uh, so, uh, although you can use it for doing single-ended uh, measurements, um, it's 
probably not um, the sort of standard way people are used to using it. So there is this um, BNC add-on board which you can have and uh, in addition to that it also delivers uh, uh, the output of the signal generator uh, into BNC, standard BNC connectors. And in addition to that, um, as well as the uh, inputs, you can AC couple them. There's some uh, jumpers on here and you can use those to AC couple. <clears throat> and similarly, you can um, uh, make these 50 ohm uh, terminated uh, connections for the uh, signal generator as well. And uh, this is, uh, you can use this on either the, either the um, Mark II, or similarly, you can use it on the Mark I like that. And uh, even if you've got these on, you can still have access to all the digital ports, etc., uh, from here. So you can uh, just plug plug this in here, so you get your power supply, digital inputs and outputs, etc., all available still on on here, which is uh, pretty neat too. So that's that. Uh, the other thing I'm just going to show you is it's from the specs. The only thing I can tell that's any different is the bandwidth um, from the point of view of performance as well as the um, power supply that I mentioned earlier on. Um, and the difference is in the way it's specified, I believe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug them both in with a signal source and let's see if we can determine if there really is a difference um, between them uh, in the performance. So I set this up now. Um, I've got uh, down here. I have uh, the two uh, analog discoveries: the version one here and the version two. Got the BNC boards. I'm just using one channel from each of the um, for each of the oscilloscope inputs. I've got a passive uh, divider here, a resistive divider, and uh, also because these are high impedance uh, scope. Uh, inputs. I've put some 50 ohm through terminations in there to um, match the 50 ohms coming out. And uh, they're being fed from an RF signal generator over here, as you just see, which is um, an HP 8656B. And uh, what we're going to do is, is have a look at the uh, waveforms that we have here. Now, um, I've sort of adjusted the uh, output of the signal generator so that we've got about one volt amplitude and uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that but uh, I'm caught it in full HD but the amplitude's basically just sitting here so they're pretty much dead on one and the 3db point's going to come if I increase the frequency on here then we see the amplitude of the signal drop uh, to uh, 0.707 which is 1 over root 2 so um, I'm going to start increasing the the frequency by 1 megahertz at a time and you'll see a couple of things happen as we do this uh, first of all you notice the amplitude just slightly drops currently at 11 megahertz uh, right now and you see it gets a little bit um, jittery this um, one thing that's lacking on this scope is it doesn't have a sine x on, on x interpolation so these are straight uh, samples at 100 mega samples a second uh, so um, you'll notice that first of all it gets a little bit um, jittery on the signal and you get these sort of um, sharp sort of edges on the sine wave here and there's one other thing I'll note uh, we're at 11 megahertz now but as I start to come in um, see we do start to have um, a few sort of interesting effects uh, one is that the triggering sometimes goes a little bit um, dodgy uh, it has struck a, a bit of a struggle triggering uh, but for the purpose of this we're actually just trying to measure the uh, the amplitude um, you can figure, fiddle with the trigger, we're currently at 21 megahertz by the way um, if I go back down, uh, 17 megahertz the triggers seem to be okay and on both of them, um, 18 megahertz starts to go a little bit, a little bit squiffy. Um, I have seen another video that somebody did that if you adjust the trigger and pop it up a little bit, you can sort of have a go at um, perhaps improving it a little bit. Um, but um, anyway, uh, that's not what we're here for. We're here to see what the bandwidth is. This is at 18 megahertz, so I'm going to increase it a little bit. We're currently at Point, about point 0.8 on the left and point 0.8 on the right as well so we're trying to look for point 0.707 
0.84 on the left and 0.83 on the right. That was at 22 MHz, 23 MHz, 24 MHz. Here's another interesting artifact that we're seeing now. This is some aliasing, so you'll see sort of beating effects here, um, which is a sort of wavy pattern um, that goes on here. And uh, so if I just increase, this is at 24 MHz, 25 MHz, 26. So we're at 0.8 on the left and 0.79 on the right. And we're looking for 0.707 is the uh, sweet spot. 28 megahertz, you'll see it's really kind of losing it a little bit here. It can increase the um, uh, time base time base speed. Um, I'll, I'll do that in a moment, but let's get it down to the amplitude of 0 0.707. So we're currently at 30 megahertz on both of them now. I've got uh, about 0.75 or so on the left and 0.73 on the right, which is the Mark II. Let's see. So that was about 0 0.707, as near as darn it on the right. That's at 32 megahertz. So we could sort of say from that that it's got about a 32 megahertz. Um, bandwidth. Uh, we're still a bit over 0 0.707 on the original analog discovery one so if I just up it a little bit there we go it's 0 0.707 almost spot on. Uh, it's at 34 megahertz so interestingly enough um, technically speaking it looks like we have a slightly better bandwidth on the analog discovery one than the analog discovery two. Um, anyway one other little thing I was going to show you if we uh, do start to um, increase the uh, speed of the time base like this you'll see this is another problem that we have it really has problems triggering um, it can't it just I mean it should be a rising edge trigger and uh, it's just not it's just not having it um, this is a limitation again of the um, uh, technology that's in this uh, scope I mean I'm assuming that they are uh, doing the triggering in the digital domain and uh, that's going to be kind of quite hard to do um, so uh, that's um, that's what you can get away with. So uh, on the original analog discovery, I think they were only boasting about five megahertz or something uh, at bandwidth, uh, but that was uh, actually quoted with something like about 0 0.1 dB uh, uh, down on the original signal. Uh, but typically, the way that uh, bandwidth is measured uh, on oscilloscopes is just a three dB point, which is um, amplitude-wise, that's 0.707. Also notice that now I've zoomed in a little bit, the amplitude's actually gone down a little bit as well. It's no longer 0.707. Um, and uh, I'm assuming that's because it doesn't have the whole, um, enough samples in there to be able to uh, see a signal. If I actually do it that highest, um, I'm sure if they had a sine X on X they could do something about that. But um, probably it doesn't have a lot of value unless you can also get the triggering right but possibly they could interpolate that as well so I drop it a little bit so we can knock the frequency a little bit that's probably more like it so it's a 31 megahertz and we're seeing this um, about 0.707 on the right hand side uh, with the new version 2 and about 0.7273 volts amplitude on the left hand side much of a muchness really because when you've got a signal like that you can't really tell anything you know, triggering's up the swanny um, so uh, it's um, not a great result but if we drop the frequency down I'm just dropping it down here to a more reasonable level let's see what 16 megahertz 15 megahertz I'm going to drop this down a little bit here that's more like it a bit more in the center that's a 15 megahertz so you get something reasonable at 15 megahertz right up the frequency again let's see when it when it goes a little bit funny mm, probably about 80 megahertz it's um, struggling to trigger again on the uh, trigger level in the middle there um, so yeah it'd be interesting to see if we could do some interpolation on this um, there's two options by the way to do some is averaging and uh, decimation i couldn't really see what difference it made i did try fiddling with that Anyway, so there you go, that's um, uh, just to sum up there, um, the difference between the analog Discovery 1 and the analog Discovery 2, uh, the 2 has a variable power supply in it, um, plus and minus, which uh, 5 volts maximum, each of them are adjustable, but one's going to be positive and the other's going to be negative, and the uh, analog Discovery 1 has fixed uh, plus and minus 5 volt power supplies, 
benefit of the two as well is that you can actually supply it with a, an external um, uh, power supply. So if your USB uh, can't supply enough power for what your uh, for the external power supplies, um, you can um, uh, increase the uh, current somewhat with an external power supply. And um, other than that, um, different case uh, and a, um, in fact, if I go down here. Other than the enclosure, slightly larger enclosure to the to the Mark II, looks possibly looks a little bit more snazzy, but um, I don't know form over function, I suppose. Um, difficult to say really. I I, I like both of them, um, and uh, yeah, this one's travelled pretty much uh, throughout the planet with me, and uh, so. Don't know which one's going to go with me next time, but um, I like them for travelling. Fantastic devices. Anyway, thanks for watching.